Hello guys, hello guys. Um, I hope you guys are doing great. Um, this is Dr. T. Um, welcome to this episode. Um, first of all, guys, I want to say thank you to the students, uh, Walter Zusulu uh, Medical students uh, that I met last year when I was doing internal medicine. They are the ones that gave me an idea of starting a YouTube channel. I never thought I would start a YouTube channel. So when you meet me in the world, I'm that person that uh, whenever there is time, I will share something with you. So I have been sharing medical concepts with them I was uh, last year. So I had been doing that. So they were like, ah, Doc, why don't you start a YouTube channel? Um, but I was like, no, 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 guys, I'm not uh, there yet. Or oh, I don't want that. I'm not about that. But uh, they kept like, they just persisted. But eventually this year, I was like, okay, let me give it a try. Uh, that's how I got to start this channel. So thank you so much, guys. I can't remember their names, but thank you so much, guys, uh, for giving me the idea and the encouragement to do this um, one. Um, personally, it's just a personal thing, and it's a promise that I made to myself. Students are not paid. So the least we can do is to teach them. Um, you can't go for a call and not learn anything. You can't go for clinical rotations from whatever, half past seven to five and do not learn anything. So I made a promise to myself that if I have students around and then there's time, I will always share something with them. So yeah, so uh, we cannot, uh, so we started this uh, pediatric cardiology series yesterday so we cannot not talk about acute uh, rheumatic fever and rheumatic heart disease so that's what, what i want to cover today i will not finish everything i'm on call today but um, i think it's already like half past three go um so i'll do what i can and then finish off maybe tomorrow um yeah so let, let's do it so uh group a streptococcal infection um, the main virulent there, the main pathogen there is Streptococcus um, pyogenes or pyogenes, whatever. So that's what we have. That's the main. Um, and this thing of group A, group B, it's purely a microbiology classification. It's a Lansfield classification, which we don't really know to, you have to know it. It won't change anything for us. So we know that it's group A streptococcus and that's the main pathogen there. So the types of infections that this bacteria causes, it causes what they call superative and non-superative. So superative is like pus forming um, so the ones that are past forming is your otitis media, sinusitis, sinusitis is um, peritone slapses, um, so peritone slapses and your maybe you can say tonsillar pharyngitis pharyngitis um then this non superative one is scarlet fever and um pharyngitis let's put pharyngitis here And not put it there okay so but what makes this special is the fact that it complicates into acute rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis but this is what we're not talk about today um I know there are people who put these under non superative Personally, I don't think they're supposed to be there because it's not the bacteria that causes this, but it's the 
it's the cross reactivity that happens. So it's not the bacteria direct, but here it's the bacteria directly causing these. But there, it's not the bacteria directly causing these. It's molecular mimics, which we're going to talk about now. Okay. So who gets this? So, so the main infection that results in this is pharyngitis. It's not known. Some people say even this one does result in this, but not so much with these ones. Ne? So let's talk about this one. Uh, let's talk about pharyngitis. So you have group A streptococcal pharyngitis. How do you move from prime from pharyngitis to acute rheumatic uh, fever? How do you move from here? So this is the primary infection, right? This is the primary infection. So the people that get this, so this is common. Anyone can get pharyngitis, but this is common between the ages of five to 15 years. Not that other people cannot get it, but it's very common. The peak is there. Um, someone less than five years, they've, they, they haven't read any documentation about that. Um, so it's between five and 15 years. So it's someone, so it's someone who had, who had um, a sore throat, not just a sore throat, but a, a group a um so short because remember so short can also be caused by different viruses so it's, a, it's someone who has a who had a so short but they were either not treated or they were inadequately treated they were inadequately treated and so they say it's common in um, so it's common in um, areas of overcrowding, common in, uh, so poverty is one of the risk and also low um, socioeconomic status. So, but let's leave that and talk about the so, so you've got someone who has who had a sore throat, and then two to three weeks later, they present with signs and symptoms suggestive of acute traumatic fever. So that's like the time the time frame. So it's someone who has either not treated or inadequately treated, and I'm going to talk about this un inadequately treated. Um, it's very important. It's going to change the way you you, you manage your, so, your your sore throat, especially in kiddies. So someone who's got a sore throat with those risk factors. Um, so now, when you've got um, when you've got um, an antigen, which is that bacteria, the body will produce antibodies to fight off the infection. And you know, if I can just add some stats here. This thing is very, very important. Um, up to date says that acute traumatic fever is a diagnosed like every year there's about 270,000 cases and it carries about 490,000 um, mortality every year. And that's like worldwide. And also remember there's also underreporting, especially other developed countries that cannot keep their their data and all of those things so it's really really something worth talking about and um yeah so you've got an antigen and then because then the the, the Im immune system recognizes that there is an antigen in the body and the body produces antibodies to attack that antigen 
But this antigen, the cell wall has got what is called an M protein. And this M protein structurally is similar to body tissues. So now, instead of the antibodies only attacking the antigen, they also attack body tissues as well because the, the body tissues, they resemble the M protein. So the body now cannot recognize that the M protein that I'm attacking is not from the bacteria, but is also from, is similar to the body tissues. So now you end up damaging your body tissues as well. We're gonna talk about which of those body tissues that are susceptible to be attacked by this. And not everyone who has a sore throat will end up having acute dramatic fever. This shows that there's also some kind of genetic susceptibility because not everyone who's got a sore throat, sore throat will end up having acute dramatic fever. So now when you have that, how, so now your antibodies, they, end up, they, they attack the antigen plus the tissues of the body. And the tissues that are being attacked by, this, um, by these antibodies, they happen to be the brain, uh, the heart, the, um, the joints, the skin and the kidneys. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about now what you expect from that. So so in presentation, it's gonna be let's just take like a simple simple example. Let's say we have a fourteen year old that comes in, whatever sex, male or female, they come in. They say they've got joint pains that are changing joints. So they are shifting from one joint to another. So maybe it was the ankle first, now the knee. So that is migratory arthralgia or arthritis. But what is important there is the migratory part. Otherwise, if you've got a non-migrating arthritis or arthralgia, it's unlikely to be um, to be um, not unless the patient presented too early before it could shift. So it, it has to be mi migratory. They might also come in. So once they come like this, so what you want to establish here, did they have a sore throat? about about two to three weeks ago and the fact that they didn't have does not mean that they might not be having acute traumatic fever because there are those who get acute traumatic fever and not remember if they had a sore throat or not or their sub sore throat was not clinical so you want to ask that and you want to ask if they had some kind of a rash we're trying to ask about scarlet fever now Scarlet fever. Um, so basically, this is your history. Okay, you want to ask about overcrowding and all of those things. It's okay. And then now, after having this, you are like, okay, you can might as well take a history because if you are suspecting um, acute traumatic fever, you might also want to ask if they've developed some kind of complications, mainly cardiac, which is you can ask them about chance of breath, you can ask them about palpitations. You can ask them about chest pain. Ask them about um, swelling of the legs. Or just feeling uh, fatigued. So you can ask them about those things. So now we're going to get to how do you diagnose? Because now we understand where it's coming from and how do we end up having this. So this, this thing of antibodies that were produced to attack an antigen but they end up attacking body tissues it's called molecular mimicry molecular mimicry 
or cross reactivity. Cross reactivity. So that's why many people they would they they are comfortable um they are comfortable saying that this is an autoimmune disease kind of because it's the immune system that really really causes the problem here so yeah um so on the next part we're going to be talking about um we're going to be talking about how do we diagnose it which is the the jones criteria okay see you on part two thank you